Let us know Give when us we're one ready. second. Let me uh, let everyone in and uh, let us go live. Just give me the nod. Yep. Okay, we're live and ready to go. Thank you so much, Dennis. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. December 1st, wow. Uh, this is the meeting of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. Councilmember Joe Buscaino, Committee Chair. I'm joined by Mr. Mike Bonin. And uh, Mr. Corian will be joining us here shortly. And in conformity with the Governor's Executive Order N-29-20, dated March 17, 2020, and due to concerns over COVID-19, this LA City Council Committee meeting will be conducted telephonically. The audio for this meeting is broadcast live on the internet at www.lacity.org and can also be heard by dialing 213-621-CITY. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meaning ID number 161-863-2891. That's 161-863-2891. And then press the pound button. Pressing Press pound again when prompted to for your participant ID. Once admitted to the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. So with that, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Good afternoon, committee members. I'll call the roll. Mr. Buscaino? Here. Mr. Bonin? Here. Mr. Krikorian? Councilman, you have two members present and a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. With that, we'll now go to public comment. To members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You will have one minute per item to speak, up to two minutes total, and if you wish, one minute for general public comment. Please speak on the items first before providing general public comment. We will then tell you when your time is up. When speaking on agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you are not speaking on topic or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from me or Mr. Gleason or the city attorney. Um, we will take 40 minutes total public comment. Finally, our members, for members of the public calling to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you are live in the committee meeting. If you're also listening to the meeting on your computer, channel 35 or other device, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately. Um, just know that there is a time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast on those devices, and it will cause confusion if you continue to listen on your other devices. Thank you so much. Please buckle up and enjoy the ride. Keep your arms and legs inside until the ride has come to a complete and final stop. Okay, with that, let's take general public comment. First caller, phone number ending in the last four digits, 7006. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state the items you would like to speak on. General fucking comment, please. Go ahead. You have three minutes. What? Number one. Fact number one. We don't need affordability and sustainability at law. We just need it to be bulldozed. Fuck you. When we get to number six. Number six. ATT Global Services. It's owned by China, so I don't talk about that. I let the FBI do that for me. Number four is a $20 million gift to Delta Airlines. Yay! With a fucking deficit of $720 million. Joey Bucket and Mike Biden have given away $20 million cash to a multi-billion dollar international conglomerate airline. That's a good thing. Thank you for that. Fuck the homeless 
in the ass. Then we get over to number 10. Ports America Cruise. <laughs> We're leaving the park with $25,000. Thank you for that, Jill. Then we have the lease giveaway on number 8. See, Mr. Bonnie? They only have to pay $7,500 to lease 141.79 acres of warehouse and office space, while you charge my neighborhood council $1,500 a month for an 800 foot office. Yay! This is all about social injustice. And that's why we like Jolly Bucket so much. Now I'll get to my general comment, if I may, darling. My one minute. Go ahead. Yeah. To all of you today, telling Joe Boscaino, fuck Joe Boscaino, you are. Joe Boscaino's the good guy. The bad guy is my body. My brother's the one causing the trouble at the homeless encampments. He's blaming Joe Buscaino for it. Joe, my brother does it for two reasons. One, he's a crack addict. And two, he's a fucking Color faggot. Rough topic. And he doesn't have to be on this committee for travel and trade and terrorism. Get my brother off the city council. And let Joey Buckets, a.k.a. Buscaino, clean up homeless niggers all over the 15th district, the 11th district. And Thank you, caller. Your time has expired. Next caller, phone number ending in 1108. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please uh, state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yeah, hi, Daniel Gus. All items in general public comment. Go ahead. You have three minutes total. Great. Thank you. Uh, council members, I find it really ironic that almost every item you have on this agenda has a California Environmental Quality Act exemption, while Nuri's meeting about env environmental justice it, it, it has been uh, going at the same time. What is the, why do you guys even posture to care about the environment if literally on all but one or two of your agenda items – you have a sequel ra uh, uh, a waiver. It makes no sense, especially Mr. Bonin, who's far left. If anybody should be against sequel waivers, as, let alone at the airport, it's Mr. Bonin. Why are you waiving these regulations in this committee meeting, but then cracking down in environmental justice and all this and that other stuff in the other meetings? It makes absolutely no sense. Specifically with regards to item number three, we're talking about a third of a billion dollars $303 million for smart parking services, you could hire an Uber for $303 million and drive everybody to their destination and do wonders for the region's employment. Why in the world does smart parking services cost $303 million? And by the way, even if it is worth it, why are you spending it in a time of austerity where you're laying off, where you're furloughing city employees? while you're getting rid of open jobs, while you're slashing the police budget by $150 million. There's nothing smart about this. It, 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 it's, it's reprehensible that you're doing this. And by the way, 40 minutes of public comment in this meeting, in a committee meeting, but you only have 20 or 30 minutes of public comment at the full council meeting, that to me, council members, especially Mr. Buscaino, sounds like you're trying to limit the audience for these ideas for limiting the audience for these agenda items. How can the committee meetings, and by the way, you're not alone, Nuri's meeting has 40 minutes also, but why are you having more time in the committee with a smaller audience, whereas you move to the bigger city council meeting and you only have 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 minutes, it looks like you guys are trying to hide something. Not that you are, I suspect that you are with a $303 million agenda item, but you should really allow for more public comment at the larger uh, uh, council meeting if you're going to have a good amount of time at the committee. That's all. I receive back the rest of my time, but please take these things into mind. Thank you.
Next caller, phone number ending in 5436. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Uh, yeah, my name is Zach, and I'd like to make a general public comment. Go ahead. You have one minute. Uh, first, I'd just like to say um, Mr. Gus hates how short public comment time is. Maybe he should stop taking up four minutes a clip at every meeting. Uh, secondly, I'd like to get into the fact that Joey Bucket, uh, the most sadistic member of the city council, is such a vindictive and petty person that he's tweeting after the council meeting where he uh, whipped the votes to get sweep started up again. He's tweeting about and he's stealing graphics from local organizers opposed to his sadism. Just a pathetic, pathetic loser, Joey Buckets. Thank you. I yield my time. Next caller, phone number ending in 1403. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Once again, caller with the phone number ending in 1403, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Joey Buckets is the best! Woo! woo Thank you for the call. Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 3318. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, Hello? caller. Please go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you would like to speak on. Yeah, this is Richie Serjenko. I just want to speak on general public comment, please. Go ahead. You have one minute. Yeah, this message is directly for Joe Buscaino, a.k.a. Joey Buckets, you little, little human being. Um, I wonder if you even have a soul. You, you're you disgusting. To get on Twitter to mock volunteer organizers with that graphic, you're paid over $200,000 a year. Get a fucking life, dude, and do your job. And you want to criminalize homelessness in Los Angeles? And you can say that's not what you're doing. You can have your staff go lie to neighborhood councils. But we know what you're up to, Joe. You fucking lying coward. You spineless little fucking coward, Joe. I'm going to rip that flag off your fucking house next time I come down to San Pedro. Motherfucker, think we're playing with you. Your neighbors try to jump me and protesters that came down to your house. See what happens next time, Joe. That fucking flag's going to be coming off your house. It's Pedro. Spineless little coward, Joe. Spineless coward. Not. Thank, thank you, caller. Your time has expired. It's Pedro Next for the caller. Record. Phone number ending in six five two three. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Sarah. I have some public comment. I just want to reiterate how shameful it was this morning to hear. A bunch of people with scripts, uh, lender support for what's happening down in CD15, just to kickstart sweep. We, we sat there last week watching Joey Bucket, <laughs> as they call it. Color, you're off topic. Oh. This has to be about the I, trade travel and tourism I'm, committee. I'm finishing. And we watched it with this PowerPoint presentation of a young white girl and her mom being forced to walk into the street like but having to walk into the street, having tears coming out of his eyes, having to literally fight back fake tears of the indignance of having to have people. The caller has been removed once again. General public comment must be within the jurisdiction of the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. That means related to the Tourism and Convention Bureau, Los Angeles World Airports, or the Port of Los Angeles. Next caller. Phone number ending in 7208. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Hey Go there. ahead, caller. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Um, hi, my name is Olga, and I just have general public comment. Um, I was just curious if uh, you can travel from LAX to hell. Uh, if so, I hope Mr. Bucket travels straight to hell, either from the port of LA, from LAX. Um, 
maybe through a highway if that's covered by the Board of Travel and Tourism. Either way, I would love for him to take his dumb ass and big snout out of here and straight to hell where he belongs because he's a massive asshole. Um, I was also curious if uh, travel, um, does that include traveling people out of their homes under freeways or is that irrelevant? I wasn't sure if he's, you know, if he's in charge of travel, maybe that's why he thought that his opinion on it mattered. But, um, uh, you know, a lot of people have had to travel from encampment to encampment because of sleep. Perhaps that's something that the travel bureau should be looking at. I don't know. It might be spreading some COVID. I don't know if you've actually been on the ground. Thank you, caller. Your time has expired. Next caller, phone number ending in 08. Nine nine. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Hello. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Stacy Dawson Stearns, and I would like to speak on all items. The Go ahead. You have two minutes. Of, uh, the freedom of movement and travel and tourism is a wonderful privilege that everyone should enjoy. However, society cannot really thrive when it has a dark secret. The dark secret that I'd like to speak of is something that you might ask Mr. Buscaino, Joey Buckets, about, which is a dark secret about white supremacy and a deep conviction to its values. He demonstrates this in every motion and every action he does. And, oh, I'm sorry. Caller? Yeah, I am the caller. I'm calling in. General comment, so okay. Well, I think that everyone who's sitting on this um, committee knows how fucked up the, the reign of hatred in your chamber is. So I'm actually just calling because you don't give enough time in public comment. So I'm just saying, fuck you, Joey Buckets. We are coming for your seat. And don't even think about running for mayor. I yield my time. Thank you. Next caller, phone number ending in 9836. Press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm going to leave general public comment. Go ahead. You have one minute. Hi. So, I'm, first of all, I think it's disgusting that during our regular city council meetings, we have only 35 minutes to speak. This actually let us not be able to comment on measures that were on there that were incredibly important. This is a disservice to actual de direct democracy. I don't know how this is acceptable. And then I want to talk to Mr. Buscaino, who is mocking activists online, who is pushing forward cruel sweeps that are actually endangering city employees. Care, care pro program employees have been infecting each other with COVID. He is endangering our our public servants by pushing forward these things that, honestly, we don't need to be doing right now in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. I yield the rest of my time. Fuck you, Joey Bucket. Next caller, phone number ending in 7964. Press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. My name is Gina Viola, and I'd like to give public comment. Uh, go ahead. You have one minute. Okay. So trade, travel, and tourism. What are you doing for industries in the trade, travel, and tourism uh, that aren't returning to work? What are you doing for all of the folks that work at the convention center and the hotels that are booked only when we have citywide conventions? You're doing nothing about that. The only thing you're doing is being concerned about sweeping homeless people out of the way so that you can attract tourism, yet you're not doing anything sub substantially to actually care for the residents of this city. It is not just a matter of tourism, people coming from out of the state, out of the country to visit us. There are people living here that work in those industries. What are you doing for those folks? Here you are preparing by making your city pretty again by sweeping folks to, to Lord knows where because there are no beds for people. One per 500 bed is not enough. It's not enough to... Thank you, caller. Your time has expired. Next caller, phone number ending in 6068. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, just general public comment, please. 
go ahead. You have one minute. Yeah, I, you know, we were calling in. We had the lines packed with public comment during the regular city council meeting, and we wanted to give comment on uh, on agenda item 33. Um, and the Joe Buscaino, uh, you know, going against CDC guidelines um, to sweep people away from their belongings and from their shelter and from and from where they live. Um, it's just rude, Joe, it, it, and it's just, it's cruel. Caller, it's cruel, caller, and the cruelty is the point, caller, because, caller, yes. please limit your general public comment to Oh, I want to reiterate, yeah, I'll, I'll say to travel and tourism, I want to reiterate if uh, the point made by Olga earlier, um, if it's possible for Buscaino to travel from LAX to hell because he's a piece of shit, fuck Joey Bosket. Fuck Joey Bucket coming to rip that flag off his house. Any more speakers on the queue? Yes, we got a few more. Caller, uh, phone number ending in 0899. Press star six to unmute yourself. Caller with phone number ending in 0899. Press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, no, I, uh, I wasn't in the... Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 6523. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Hi. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Thanks, Glenn. I was not in the queue. I was already on, and I said my piece. Joey Buckets is a criminal, and time is coming. Just as Stacey said, thanks. Have a great day. Caller, not getting any audio from you. Call running in 6523. Like I said, I yield my time. Please let me go. I don't want to be dealing with you guys anymore. Thanks. Okay, caller, um, I'm going to remove you from the room. Please call back. We are unable to get your audio. Uh, next caller, phone number ending in 5436. Press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yeah, I already spoke. Joey Bucket sucks. That's all I have to say. Okay, next caller. Phone number ending in 7140. 7140, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go Hi, ahead, caller. Cool, great. Um, this public flagellation must get exhausting at some point, and I almost feel for you guys, but I think there's a quick solution, which would just be to stop bothering unhoused people and to let our communities thrive where they are. Thank you. Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 4707. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Nuri, and I just wanted to mention that um, I'm having an issue with tourism in the city lately in that there's a bunch of tourists coming to eat at all of our restaurants outdoors and spread COVID, and Joey Buckets doesn't seem to want to sweep them away. For some reason, he only wants to sweep away homeless people who have nowhere else to go. Additionally, I have a trade and travel question, which is that are we embarrassed as a city when people come to visit us from places like Denmark where homelessness has been abolished by housing people? Um, how are we promoting ourselves as a city, the world, the tourists uh, who are going to come here and see how bad we are at housing people and never want to come back here again? Um, just a few trade, travel, and tourism concerns. And um, I also hope that the tourism board considers sending Joey Buscaino to hell. Thank you. I yield it. 
Okay, next caller, uh, phone number ending in 2370. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Meredith, and I just wanted to mention to Joe Bustano, uh, thanks for copying our graphic. Really glad to know that it touched a nerve. And we see you, and we hate you, and we hate everything you stand for. So if you could just stop violating CDC guidelines and stop endangering the lives of everyone in the city with your reckless disregard for the lives of unhoused neighbors. Uh, that would be really cool. And if you want design tips, I would be happy to reach out to your office. Just have one of your staffers contact me and I'll show them how to do it right next time. Thank you. Next caller, phone number ending in 5436. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller with the phone number ending in 5436, please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll move on. Caller ending in 7208, press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Uh, thank you. This is Mary Martinez again, and I'm calling to ask Joe to travel to hell through one of the many ports of the city of Los Angeles, such as LAX. Okay, caller's off topic. Next caller, phone number ending in 5436. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Caller ending in 5436. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 9936. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Phone number ending in 9936. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Okay, moving on. Uh, caller with the private number, please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Ray Whitmer. I'm uh, with Teamsters Local 911. I'm uh, <clears throat> before you today to speak on item number three. Teamsters Local 911 represents the um, workers at Lawa's parking operation uh, at LAX. And uh, we um, support the award of the smart parking contract to ABM. ABM has operated the central terminal area parking operation since June of 2016. They've had a solid labor record with us. Uh, we currently have a collective bargaining agreement in place through June of 2021. Uh, a ABM has pledged as part of their um, submitting this to this RFP to uh, improve wages and, and working conditions in future years. Um, so we uh, urge you to um, pass item number three and award this contract to ABM. Um, the workers are protected at LAX. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Your time has expired. Next caller, phone number ending in 5436. Pre please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller ending in 5436. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yeah, I think you you uh, you guys aren't doing a good job managing this because uh, this is like the fourth time you've called on me, but Joey Bucket sucks. That's all. Okay, next caller, uh, we'll go to the caller with the private number. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items yes. you'd like to speak on. Yes, uh, Joseph, doing a good job. Fuck my bonnet, crack addict, homeless piece of shit, fucking faggot. Clean up the CD 11 there, my friend, over there. 
Okay, that's Mr. Spindler. He's already spoken. Caller with the phone number ending in 7208. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller ending in 7208. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi there. I'm a representative of American Airlines at LAX, and I just wanted to thank Mr. Buscainino for his work in hiding poverty and sweeping away homeless people so that we can continue to make billions of dollars by sending tourists here, and uh, he can continue to fail to find housing for anybody. So thank you. As a representative of a billion-dollar industry, I really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate everything you're doing for trade, travel, and tourism. And uh, I'm sure trickle-down economics will work. And if we just keep making people like me richer, eventually those homeless folks will find houses. Thank you. I okay, next caller. Phone number ending in 6068. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Hi, yeah, this is uh, Gerilyn Buscaino. I uh, just wanted to give another shout-out to uh, Joey Buckets. Okay, same caller has already spoken. Next caller, phone number ending in 8919. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, yeah, just general public comment, please. Go ahead. You have one minute. Uh, yeah, so I'm just I'm a concerned citizen, and I know how important tourism is to our our city, and I'm worried that, you know, with COVID cases going up, we're not going to get back to a place where we can we can fully open and have those tourism dollars coming in because people like Joe Buscaino are simultaneously sweeping homeless people, which we know is spreading COVID and we know is dangerous and is against CDC guidelines. Wow, champion keeping the outdoor dining there, which is also spreading COVID. So I think if we want to, you know, get that sweet, sweet Hollywood tourism money, people like Joe Buscaino and they just stop being sadistic creeps and let people live and actually use our resources in a good way to help people instead of being a pile of shit. Thank you. Next caller, phone number ending in nine nine three six. Actually, you've already spoken. Let's go to someone who hasn't. Phone number ending in five four three six. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller ending in five four three six. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll move on. Caller ending in 3318, please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yeah, I just wanna say that resuming sweeps violates LA shelter in place orders. Sweeps contravene the CDC's health guidelines. Define caller, you're not on topic. Risk. Fuck Joey Bucket. Sweeps are inhumane, destructive and- Okay, that caller has been removed. He's not on topic. Next caller, uh, private number, please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller with the private number, please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller, please turn down your device. Um, Okay, caller, phone number ending in 8408. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yeah, hi, my name is Peter. I'd like to speak to general public comment. Go ahead, you have one minute. Sure. So first, on tourism, um, I think a lot of people have made really good points about the fact that how are we ever going to expect to get any tourism back in the city when we have city council members trying to actively undermine CDC guidelines and inhumanely sweep our unhoused neighbors. Um, really problematic, probably something that this committee should um, look into. Um, and, you know, second, in regards to trade, um, I was wondering, would it be possible to trade 
Joe Buscaino for a bucket of feces, uh, because I think that bucket would do a better job on the city council. Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 5138. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, uh, my name is Wednesday Suicide. I'd just like to tell Joe to uh, get fucked. Thank you. Next caller, phone number ending in 9836. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please Hi. state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I just had a quick general public comment. I'm just curious why a guy is in charge of travel and tourism that went on an unessential trip to a sports playoff or final game during a pandemic when we were under strict stay-at-home orders. It seems pretty counterintuitive to have somebody responsible for literally lives and is a figure for, you know, traveling, which we're not supposed to be doing, do that in the most dire part of the pandemic while we're hitting another dire part of the pandemic when Union Station was pretty much almost closed yesterday until people started a ruckus about it. You know, we might want to reconsider who we're set putting in charge of these tourism committees because they don't seem to want to follow any rules. Thank you. I yield my time. Fuck you, Joey Bucket. Okay, next caller, phone number ending in 6308. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, my name is Auda, and this is just a general public comment. Go ahead. You have one minute. Um, how can you give a shit about tourism when you're actively sleeping away on house Angelinos? Nobody wants tourists right now. Open the fucking hotels and house your people. Joey Buckets, go fuck yourself. I yield my time. Next caller, phone number ending in 4707. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hey there, my name is Big Patty, and I'm a longshore woman down at the harbor. I'm just calling in to support all the people who are telling Joe to go to hell. Joe Buscaino, you're a piece of shit. Uh, me and all the other Big Patties down at the harbor fucking hate your goddamn guts, and uh, you should rip that flag off. Thank you. Oh, wait, keep the flag up. We want to come down and rip it off. Thank you. Okay, private caller, uh, please press star six to unmute yourself. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. That's Mr. Spindler again. Okay, Mr. Chair, we have satisfied public comment for the meeting. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kokorian has just joined us. Uh, thank you. So, not just, but he had joined us during public comment. Thank you, Mr. Kokorian, for, for being here with us. With that, members, I'd like to turn your attention to today's agenda. And I would recommend taking on consent items 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Any objection or any of those items you'd like to hold on the desk? Okay. Hearing none, we'll approve on those. I actually, let's take a roll call. Sure. On those, uh, taking those items on consent, please. Recommendation is to approve items 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Mr. Buscaino? Yes. Mr. Bonin? Yes. Mr. Krikorian? Aye. Approval of those items passes. Thank you. With that, let's take item number one. Item one is now before us. Mr. Kirk, if you could read item one into the record, please. Yes, sir. Item one. Motion. Bonin, Buscaino, Blumenfield, Coretz, instructing the Los Angeles World Airports to report relative to the reliability, affordability, sustainability, future, and customer service orientation of the flyaway bus program. Thank you so much. Uh, with, this, with that, colleagues, we have Mr. Arbacci here with us. Um, a key element of improving uh, the passenger experience at LAX is um, providing um, more 
options for our passengers to get to and from the airport. Um, and improving the flyaway program is, is critical to that effort as we're trying to get more people out of single passenger automobiles. I wanna thank Mr. Arbachi, Samantha Bricker and everyone at LAWA for their hard work on developing and releasing the RFI in collaboration with my staff and council member Bonin's team. Uh, the RFI clearly reflected the priorities expressed in the motion, which is reliability, affordability, sustainability, customer service and accommodating future growth. So really appreciate the way that um, you took these ideas and ran with them. So Mr. Abachi, um, a couple questions. Can you just share with us uh, some of the ideas uh, in the RFI responses that relate to improving customer service and the rider experience? Also, what are some of the ideas for incentivizing passengers uh, to take fly away as opposed to other forms of transportation? Thank you, Council Members. I'll just give a brief lead in into the approval process and I'll let Samantha Bricker uh, take on those questions and talk specifically thank about you. the RFI itself, if that's okay with, with you. Please, thank you. So you know, in line with the innovative approach we've been taking here at LAWA to, to help transform our airport, we want to really reimagine the way we deliver the flyaway services. Such that Mr. Bocci, I'm, I'm hearing some feedback, um, some clicking noise. I don't know if that's you or if we can have folks mute yourself, please. That'll be helpful. Sorry, are you still hearing it? Yeah, whenever you speak, it's like there's a clicking noise. I don't, is it just me members or? Okay. No, so I looks like others are hearing it. Um. I don't know what the problem is there. Yeah, when, you're, when you're speaking. I'll let Samantha answer your questions directly and then I'll, I'll hear them back. Hi, good afternoon. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you. Okay, terrific. Um, well, thank you uh, very much. And uh, we had uh, a really good um, response to our RFI that was sent out to over 2,700 active users on Babin to about 15,000 on our promotion distribution list that we worked with with the mayor's office. We um, had about 100 people respond uh, to our um, virtual forum and uh, we received 36 responses to the RFI. So specifically to your question, some of the ideas that were presented in the RFI included um, on-demand transit, uh, variable fleet sizes, um, this really helps uh, with the customer experience because um, it gives a more um, custom uh, experience for our users. So not everyone um, wants to take a 40-foot bus um, in a fixed route. Um, this would allow for more flexibility, virtual spot, stops, um, and would really uh, help that first last mile connection as well, which has been a challenge. So that's something that we're looking at uh, very seriously as part of our RFP. Some of the other suggestions were loyalty rewards programs. So this would help boost the passenger experience as well. Um, discounts on uh, on fares, you know, a monthly pass, um, you know, free free rides if you had a certain number of rides. Again, this would incentivize passengers to take the service. So along with that specific um, type of program would come technology and the ability to do some sort of um, contactless payment, reservations in advance, those sorts of things. So those were um, some of the really uh, keen ideas that were proposed as part of the RFI. Um, contactless boarding services, um, more multimodal trip planning. These things uh, would really uh, help us in um, getting a, a better contract, getting better service for our passengers, um, allow us to use uh, technology and the passengers to use technology. So these are things that are all being uh, looked at as part of an RFP. That RFP is um, being written right now. Um, we are uh, looking through the RFI responses, looking at what's feasible, taking into account uh, the motion and many of the suggestions that were made and wrapping them into an RFP that hopefully will go out by the end of this month. Um, that will uh, help us, um, that will allow us to move forward with an award uh, before um, June and uh, get new service uh, on board by the summer. So uh, we're very uh, excited um, about, uh, you know, some of the suggestions that were made, 
a lot of the suggestions that were made in the motion that we help to inform the RFI and we'll inform the RFP. And then when we get our responses, we'll be able to really see how that's put into play and what kind of proposals we get. But we're hoping that um, many of the same firms that provided information in the RFI also respond to the RFP um, and we get those good ideas as part of the process. Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Thanks, Laura, for the presentation. It was a little hard to follow, actually, because you went from the first slide in your presentation to the last one with a rapid scroll through the rest. So um, if you could send a copy of that, because I, I missed uh, some of the detail. Uh, actually, if you could go, go back to the one with the five columns. There you go, yeah. Uh, so, uh, with this info here that you've gotten from the RFI, uh, I'm wondering if you could talk about what you're you're thinking of doing with the RFP on these uh, th these five criteria here. So, um, we're again still uh, working on the RFP, and, and I apologize for skipping around. I was trying to answer Councilman Buscaino's question, uh, which was on the last slide. So happy to go through any of the presentation. Um, but you know what we're looking at is um, kind of features in each of these columns. So for example, we are very much interested in uh, on-demand uh, microtransit type service. Mm -hmm. That's very different than what has been done for Flyaway before. So we're looking at um, actually uh, leveraging some of our modeling that we've done on where our employees and our passengers where those densest areas are, and we're looking to get that information out as part of the RFP so people can look to see what new service might be available and where on demand might be logical. So we're um, looking at how to incorporate that type of service. That also goes to mixed fleet opportunities. Again, we think that there's a better model than a 40 foot bus for all routes. So we're looking at flexible sizing. We think that's going to be very important. So that's in the reliability category. For affordability, we're looking, as I said, at different fare structures, a rewards program, a monthly pass. Uh, we're also leveraging um, the TMO, Transportation Management Organization, that we've just stood up mm -hmm. and looking to see how we can incorporate uh, that and get more of our employees uh, taking the flyaway service. Um, we think that's a great opportunity for them. So again, uh, discounts, uh, monthly passes, and rewards. Um, for sustainability, really encouraging clean fleet options. That's something that's really important, especially for a long-term contract. Uh, we know that um, there are horizon years for uh, transporting to electric vehicles. We think that's going to be important uh, as part of this uh, program as well. So that will be uh, part, of, um, part of what we include in the RFP. Um, for customer centric, and that was the question I was answering from Councilman Buscaino, really looking at things like um, how to improve uh, customer access, online ticket sales, uh, mobile ticket sales, advanced reservations, uh, what technology is needed to do that, and putting that into the RFP so that we can do it. We're also looking at something called performance based contracting. We've been working closely with your LADOT that implemented a uh, similar type service. And so we've been working in partnership with them uh, to figure out how to incorporate, incorporate that into the RFP as well. And lastly, future growth. Um, we talked a little bit about um, expanded service areas. Again, looking at where our passengers and employees are coming from. We have a huge number of passengers and employees that are coming within 10 miles of the airport. That's perfect for microtransit and great for on-demand type service. So again, if we can get that information out as part of the RFP, we can encourage that as part of the proposal process. So uh, those are all things that um, right now we're working on how to incorporate into the RFP. We do want to have apples to apples comparison. So we're trying to figure out how to do that and get the best bids. We're also encouraging folks to partner. So. Uh, operations, technology, and marketing um, are three uh, areas that we think are really important for this proposal. In the, in the past, it's been one operations service provider. We think this will give more opportunities for businesses to partner with each other and bring their knowledge of technology and marketing to the table 
and, um, and have some sort of joint venture or partnership um, as they propose. So we think it'll also give a lot of opportunities perhaps for small businesses to participate where they haven't before. So are you envisioning that there is uh, se several different operators uh, operating different lines or different types of service? We're hoping that there'll be one operator, but that there will be various partners. So um, maybe a different technology platform um, or and that sort of thing. But we're hoping to actually consolidate into one operator. We know in the past, having more than one operator, we have inconsistencies in service. Right. And um, DOT has also shared their concerns with that as well. So the idea would be that we would consolidate this into one contract and have one operator that have, let's say, an umbrella of services that would be provided by that operator. And how are we thinking uh, routes or uh, pickup drop-off uh, locations will be determined? Is that going to be by the operator, by LAWA, by some uh, conversation or process? How's that going to work? So we know that Union Station and Van Nuys um, are successful flyaway services. We would like to keep those. Uh, those have been our, our base for quite some time. So we know that from a fixed route point of view, those continue to make sense. We know that Long Beach and Hollywood were making a comeback of sorts before pre-COVID. We were spending more um, time on marketing and, and beefing up that service. Um, so we want to put that out there and see what we can do in terms of um, bringing that service back. I think in terms of the new service, again, we, um, we think that we will get pricing of what on-demand service could be like so that we know how to evaluate it. But I think the routes and the service and the headways will have to be negotiated. I think that it'll be very difficult to have everyone propose a different route um, as part of the RFP process. Hard to compare that. Um, so we're looking to see how we would get that information, but we are including in the RFP language that would allow us to add routes, that would allow us to add service, um, and that would allow us to add headways um, as part of this process. When, when you talk about on, on demand, are, are you talking about there people could be brought to various different places? Uh, near Union Station or Van Nuys, or are we talking about somebody could be taken to someplace else uh, entirely, whether it's you know Century City or, 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 or Wilmington? I think um, two things. One, it could be a new location. So last year we ran a few test locations um, from the South Bay, from Santa Monica, Century City. So I think um, there's a possibility that we could add new routes uh, based on uh, new locations where there would be density um, and demand. Um, but the other thing we're looking at is what Metro and Inglewood are doing as part of their shuttles, um, which would be to have virtual stops um, in neighborhoods um, or stops in certain areas um, where people could, um, it wouldn't be a fixed route, but it would be based on a request. Uh, for that service, and if there was a shuttle in the area, they could provide service. So a little bit like the Dash Now um, that LADOT is doing, mm -hmm. um, more of a flexible um, shuttle type service rather than a, a fixed route with fixed schedules. So we're, again, really looking at, at what's working out there and trying to replicate that as part of this RFP. As it's been structured so far, has the, has the flyaway system been almost entirely passengers or have employees used it as well? Employees have used it as well, um, you know, but right now it's only at Union Station and uh, Van Nuys. Right. Um, it's a, a little bit of an issue um, in terms of um, ensuring we have enough space, frankly, on it, especially during peak times. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we would want to understand is the certainty of employees taking it on a regular basis. How do we accommodate um, those service levels and making sure that we can accommodate both employees and passengers. But um, it would be, you know, for 55,000 people who come to the airport, it would be great to have uh, them use uh, a flyaway type service. Sure. A uh, couple quick questions on price. Um, uh, part A is uh, what thought have you given to the, the $5 fare that was suggested in the motion? And B, have you had any conversations with um, 
uh, Metro regarding uh, free transfers uh, to or from their system? So we have given some thought to the five dollars. Um, you know, I think that that would be a very heavy subsidy from us um, based on our current structure. And I think that's why we need to have a better understanding of what's being proposed um, and what those service levels are and what type of um, discounts and reward programs could be offered uh, that would lower the fare for passengers and for employees. Um, so I think uh, price is definitely a factor. We, we found out that, you know, when you go too high, then you're not a good competitor to, uh, you know, Uber and Lyft, especially kind of close in to the airport. So um, there may be a different, you know, a, a differentiated fare structure. Um, in terms of Metro, um, I don't think that we've had a conversation with them about the past, but it is something, again, that we talked about in the RFI about um, really linking with the rest of the mass uh, transit system. I think that's something that's really important for this. And again, how do we work together on first last mile? Yep. Um, I think there's a lot of things where partnership um, would be really important for this project. So it's something we're definitely open to doing and, and we will do as part of this process. Thanks. And the last question is, is regarding the, the, the future growth. Uh, at the end of October, the airport released the draft DIR for uh, another round of modernization projects. It's the, it's, I think it's the first project that the airport is doing under uh, BMT instead of uh, LOS as a, as, a, as a traffic impact standard. Uh, and if the anticipated mitigations uh, don't work out and we have to uh, revert to additional mitigations, I imagine, I suspect, and, and I think recommend that, that expanded flyaway may be one of the additional uh, mitigations we need to expand or ramp up. So as you're looking at future growth, uh, I'd, I'd want to be sure that you have the capacity within whatever gets structured to ramp up. It may be more of a subsidy from the airport, in fact, but uh, that may be what's required if, if we don't uh, meet the traffic uh, impact uh, requirements under BMT. Exactly, and we've actually included expanded flyaway as one of our mitigation measures, um, so totally agree with you on that. We think that's going to be one of the linchpins for uh, realizing BMT reduction. We also have expanded on-demand, which could be part of this um, contract as well. So uh, we are um, already planning for those mitigation measures, if you will, um, with this contract, and we think that's going to be um, an important part of, of achieving that BMT reduction. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Mr. Kokorian, any questions, comments? Uh, just very briefly, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I love uh, the Van Nuys flyaway. It is the best way uh, to get from the Valley into LAX by far. Um, and I'm so kudos, first of all, for that. Uh, but I'm glad that we're doing this and looking to uh, upgrade and expand uh, the flyaway service. I, I think uh, the more people know about it and use it, um, it it's going to be a great success as we continue to expand it and, and improve it. Um, you, you talked quite a bit about the on-demand service, and uh, and I appreciated Mr. Bonin's questions. I, there's a lot of different ways that you can define what that would look like, and Metro has been experimenting, as you mentioned, with some on-demand service with a single contractor that, that we use to provide that service. There's different models that could be baked into the RFP uh, with regard to that component. Um, what I would just ask is that if, if that on-demand service is going to be provided by a, a subcontractor to whoever we uh, use for this, that it be somebody that provides uh, decent living wages to their drivers, that provides fingerprint-based security, that provides uh, green vehicles, and not the TNCs, which do none of those things. Um, so, uh, it, it, you know, much of the grading system that you build into the RFP will determine who has the inside track on that. And I certainly hope that we won't be giving an inside track to um, you know, Silicon Valley billionaires who abuse their workers and abuse the environment and abuse the safety of the public and um, are not accessible to the disabled. 
Thank you. Yeah, that duly noted. And, and one of the things that's important about this service in particular is, is the mass transit component of the service or the, the HOV component of the service. We do not, we want it to be clean. Uh, we want it to carry, you know, more than one passenger. Um, that's, that's been a hallmark of the flyaway service and we think it's really important to replicate it. So even if we're using smaller vehicles, they're not going to be single passenger cars. Okay, um, great. Terrific. The idea would be that we um, continue with that HOV type service. Very good. And I, I, if I can second and third and fourth, Mr. Bonin's suggestion that we also look into uh, interfacing with uh, Metro to, you know, provide some sort of seamless uh, system of, of free transfer and, and, and that sort of thing. I think that would uh, make a lot of sense as well. Right. Thank you, Mr. Gregorian. Yeah, and to piggyback on uh, on that uh, effort to integrate with Metro, have uh, you know the Harbor Gateway in in the South Bay, Carson um, communities and, and Harbor communities, the the Harbor Gateway Transit Center. Do we have a partnership there? Um, have we tested flyaway uh, at that transit center? Because I know you mentioned South Bay. I don't know what location was a pickup drop off or flyaway. Uh, so South Bay was, um, I think around the Torrance area was where we were looking. Um, we had been running a flyway service from Long Beach, which um, was starting to gain ridership um, towards, you know, before COVID hit. So um, we know there are areas um, over there. What we've done uh, recently is um, we've actually done a travel model, which looks at all of our 55,000 bags where they're coming from and has also been able to look at where the passengers are coming from. And we've been able to go out three miles, five miles, up to you know 25 miles, and we're looking at where those densest areas are and uh, formulating ways of getting that information to these responders so that we may negotiate future uh, routes and service levels with them. So we will certainly look at the Harbor Gateway area um, and see how that corresponds with a, a lot of the data we're getting and that might be a good opportunity to expand service in that area. Fantastic. Um, and lastly, for me, I, I know we've been um, there's you know the, the the lamp project at the at the airport um, about a year ago. Lawa made a number of changes to the CTA um, at LAX, including establishing a bus only lane uh, on the lower level inside the median and closest to the terminal. So, how important do you believe maintaining this bus only lane is? In is an in, in increasing usage of the flyaway program. So um, certainly through construction, uh, we've said that that's very important for maintaining that bus only lane, and we would anticipate that flyaway would continue to use that lane, uh, you know, going forward. Um, after construction is over, and we have a policy that indicates um, who will be dropping off and picking up at our intermodal transportation facilities and will be coming into the CTA, we certainly want to encourage multi-passenger vehicles um, and reward that behavior. Um, and so it would seem to me that um, continuing to have uh, access to the CTA for uh, buses um, that are bringing in multi-passengers um, is a benefit, um, something yep. that will benefit the community and, and our passengers. Um, and so, you know, I think that's where, um, what our thinking is right now. Um, and so, uh, you know, we would want the flyaway to continue to come into the CTA um, to reward that behavior. Good to know. Appreciate that. Mr. Abachi, I know we had some technical glitches um, on the onset of this item. Anything you'd like to add? I believe we're back on. No, I, I hope you're not having the same problem. Loud and clear. So, Perfect. Great, great. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm, I know that Samantha gave a great answer to all the questions. Okay. And just to reiterate that, you know, this is this is um, a, re, a reimagining of the existing flyaway service. But really, the idea is all that's left is the brand. Um, you know, the, the key is flexibility and the scalability and the use of digital technology to improve both the operations, the customer experience, um, and the and our revenue capabilities as well to the ability to earn revenue. So it's, you know, it's really a, a revolutionary solution that we're really looking forward to some you know, real new solutions and groundbreaking solutions to come back as a result of the RFP. 
Appreciate that. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bricker, for your time. With that, um, colleagues, I would ask that we would uh, approve uh, the item before us, item number one. Any objection? Okay, with that, we need a uh, uh, roll call vote. Recommendation is to approve item one. Mr. Buscaino. Yes. Mr. Bonin. Yes. Mr. Kerkorian. Aye. Recognition to approve the motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. With that, let's now take um, item number three. Number three, sir. Item three is a Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to resolution number 27128 for a LAWA contract with ABM Aviation Incorporated for a term of seven years with two one-year extension options for smart parking services at LAX and at Van Nuys Airport for a cost not to exceed $303,264,638 and related environmental finding. Thank you, sir. Okay, well, who's at, who's, who's, uh, at bat here for uh, LAWA? Mr. Bacci? Yes, so I, I, I will start, Council Member, and then uh, we have John Butterback joining us as well um, to, if we need to get into you know, to more of the details. Um, you know, just as we look to uh, reimagine the way we do the flyway service, you know, we for a long time have wanted to, to reimagine and transform the way parking works at the airport. So we, you know, we did a, a long process to try to make sure we're identifying all of the new and, and services, parking services and technologies that are available and incorporate as many as we can into the way we operate our parking lots uh, at LAX and Van Nuys. And to take a more holistic approach instead of having different solutions for different parking lots, gain one overall system uh, that will allow us to be able to make more efficient use of our, um, of our parking spaces across the airport and also to be able to uh, increase our revenue that we, we get for this. Uh, so we, we are, you know, and we have worked out a, a really good solution here. Um, and, and Jeff, um, Jeff Utterback did a really great job in putting together this contract and negotiating it with, with ABM, going through the whole process. The idea is, is that we are going to provide completely new way of parking for our, for our passengers and guests. So the idea will be that it will be completely digital and contactless if, if, uh, if desired. So it will include things like reserve parking, the ability to put uh, you know, your, your credit card into a system and your license plate. And when you pull up to the parking lot, it automatically, the gate automatically opens up and then there is um, signage and wayfinding in the parking lot to show you where your parking lot or your parking space is if you reserved or where there is open if you didn't reserve. And then when you leave, the gate again just opens without any contact uh, and you are charged, uh, your credit card is charged uh, in the background. Uh, so the, the idea of uh, having that whole contactless service, uh, increased services for passengers, including reservations, valet parking, um, and the ability to uh, have clear wayfinding to understand which parking lots are open and where uh, within parking lot there are free spaces. The idea also is to be able to have the ability to, uh, to, to dynamically price uh, parking based upon demand such that we can make best use of, of, the, of the key parking spots in the airport and incent people to go to other spaces where we have more space available um, if, uh, if, if necessary. So it'll be a lot of flexibility. It's gonna be a lot more customer centric. It's gonna allow us to distribute our parking services much better than we can today. So we can actually distribute parking services through our website, through our partner websites, such as airline, um, airline websites or airline apps. We have the ability to, to integrate with third party apps so that we can distribute our, our parking services through that. So the idea is it will help us to significantly improve the amount of revenue that we generate. Uh, this is, you know, we, we do have our parking lots are being operated today. 
and we pay an, an, you know, an operating fee for uh, the operation of those airports. And of course we get revenue from, uh, we get a significant amount of revenue from our parking lots that help us to offset the fees that we pay for operations. Through this contract, we, um, we actually will um, you know, gain a higher rate of return than we would if we continued with our system. So we'll be able to improve the amount of revenue we generate uh, and, and really uh, have an in, a, a rate of return of above 27%. Uh, so we are, we um, we believe that this is really a, a great achievement for for Lawa and a very important product in our overall digital marketplace strategy and an improvement of our airports for our passengers and our guests. And if you have any specific uh, questions, I think uh, Jeff Jeff give uh, more of the detail. Thank you, Mr. Arabachi. Any questions, members, comments? Mr. Bonin. Just a question, um, Justin or staff, thanks for the presentation. Um, one of the things that always concerns me about traffic is that there's a relatively easy way to address what is often the differential between bearable traffic and unbearable traffic. And that's the, 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 the circling and the idling, looking for a, a cheaper place to park. I'm wondering if you could tell me a bit about What's going to be done here? I know we've got some 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 great technology and the ability to, to info share. Um, uh, will folks entering the CTA be able to know what the variety of prices are for different things, so they're not driving around? And will our our, our signage be updated accordingly? Yes, absolutely. This will give us the ability to um, send that information through multiple channels. Uh, certainly people before they even come to the airport can go on their mobile device or on their computer and understand what is the best option for them to park uh, and understand the different rates at the different locations. And then it also gives us the ability to put signage up to be able to say which um, which parking lots are free and what uh, and if we want which, what the rates are in those specific parking lots so that people can be more informed and make a better decision as to where they should go and park. So yes, all of those are available. Another important thing is one of the things that causes congestion is the queuing within the parking lot yeah. and the queuing to get into the parking lot. Yep. And with, with this solution, because it's contactless or uh, we, you're not stopping to having to pay for somebody at a booth, uh, it will significantly improve the flow of traffic into, through, and out of, uh, of our parking lots. So b back in the pre-pandemic era when when it was possible to, to go to a Friday night uh, movie, you go into most movie parking lots and it would say level four, 200 spaces, level three, 100 spaces, level two, level one, nothing available. Uh, I don't recall that I've ever seen anything like that at the airport. Are we gonna have that so that people will know, oh, I'm not even gonna bother circling on one or two, I'm gonna go upstairs. Exactly, it will, it will give you, um which levels to, to, to go to, which levels have spaces, and then which row has spaces. And then some, in some circumstances, there'll actually be red and green lights above the parking spot, so you can see actually which ones are free and which ones are not. Great, okay, all right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Kokorian, you good? Okay, fantastic. Okay, with that, with item three, members uh, would uh, recommend approval. And I'd uh, like to ask for a roll call vote. Yes, sir. Item number three. Recommendations for approval. Mr. Buscaino. Aye. Mr. Bonin. Aye. Mr. Krikorian. Aye. The item passes. Fantastic. I believe that was the last item on the desk. That's correct, sir. Thank you, Thank you all. Um, and before we adjourn, I do want to recognize and welcome Madanya Kudishuhidi. Got that right. Uh, welcome as our new CAO uh, LAWA analyst. Um, welcome and looking forward to work with you. It's a great team here, as you can see. So Thank you. All right, with that, uh, we are now adjourned. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Council members. Thank you. Thank you.